Hello everyone, I'm Casper Kuma and welcome to Don't Open Your Eyes. Now if you remember a while back, we played Radio Signal and it's by the same person who made that, so I'm expecting something mildly depressing <laughs> and philosophical. <laughs> oh, this is an awful little house. <laughs> I don't know, I, I hate looking in hallways when it's dark. <laughs> it's getting late. My eyelids are beginning to feel heavy. I better go to sleep. Can you shut the door? I don't like looking at it. <laughs> Please. I leave aside the book I've been reading and look out my window. The process of falling asleep is always a struggle against noise. Barking dogs, police sirens, or even my own intrusive thoughts. But not even the turning of gears in my brain are producing much sound. Tonight is just oddly quiet. Quiet. Too quiet. I feel restless. My sight veers towards the hallways uh, to the hallway outside my door. The distance between my room and the opposite wall is only ten steps long. I know since I had made a habit of counting them whenever I go out. One, two, three, absent mindedly, but always. I don't know why. Maybe I just like being aware of my surroundings to the smallest details. But tonight is different. The hallway looks like it stretches into nothingness, like the throat of a gargantuan beast. Logical thinking cries that it's just my imagination. I, there can't be anything wrong or different about it. It's just a hallway. But... I don't want to look at it. So I take a deep breath and close my eyes. I mean, you have a perfectly good door right there. You could totally shut it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. Just leaving it out there. In my room. What the heck is that? <laughs> There's a bed. In my room. There's a wardrobe. In my room. There's pictures framed on the wall. My room is part of myself. It's a world I know like the back of my hand. Were someone to blindfold me and ask me to find my way around, I'd do so without slightest difficulty. As long as nothing changes, having my eyes closed make no makes no difference. In this room, I can always find what I want to find. Man, this is not like my room. I can never find anything. I have too many things. <laughs> Just because in this room, I know how everything looks. I need to wake up early tomorrow. I should really try to sleep. Maybe you should get like a sound machine or something so you're not thinking all the time, you know? I don't know. I listen to like, uh, like lo-fi music when I'm going to sleep. I don't know. Because I also think too much. <laughs> hmm. Awkward. Awkward silence. You should really shut that door though. I hate, I hate having doors open when I'm trying to go to sleep. Creeps me out. <laughs> What's that sound? I don't hear anything. Are those footsteps? Maybe I should turn it up. Oh, now I hear something. Oh god, shut the door. Lock the door. Jump out the window and run. No, that's impossible. Must be my imagination. I don't think so, it's getting closer, man. But it's getting closer. And closer. No, thank you. And closer. Time to shut that sucker. And closer. Man, if this was an intruder, you're gonna die. <laughs> They're gone. Right, there's no way someone could be there. I mean, you don't know that. Someone could have broken in. Oh god, what was that? <laughs> oh no! Um... Slenderman? Is that you? Hey. Oh god, oh it talks. Oh no, hey. Hey indeed. Open your eyes. I don't want to. I'm closing them now. <laughs> I'm not here. I'm sleeping. No. <laughs> no, we don't open our eyes. That's horrifying. I don't open my eyes. I don't want to look at that. Uh oh. Uh. Open your eyes. No! 
I don't wanna. I really don't wanna. At me. No, thank you. I do my best to ignore the voice. Why won't you look at me? Because you're horrifying. Where are your manners? I'm scared. <laughs> if a stranger asks for help, is it right to ignore them? If they're broke, if they've broken into your house, and they're Please. sitting at your bed, I think it's okay. I can feel someone breathing over my ear. It's cold. I will share a secret with you. I have never seen myself before. Okay. I don't know if my face is ugly. Yeah, I can tell from just your outline that you're probably really ugly, so let's just keep the mirrors tucked away and let's close our eyes and you can at least pretend in your dreams you're handsome. I don't know the color of my skin. I'm not sure you have any. I don't know how I feel about that. You won't find me anywhere. And soon, you will forget. Like a faded dream. I know you're not asleep. Please stop talking to me. <laughs> you listen. With those tiny ears of yours, they look so fragile. Don't look at my ears. <laughs> like I could almost grab them. No, don't touch my ears. I feel something caress my ear. No, no, no. <laughs> Put my fingers around them. Ew. Ew. No, off. don't tear off my ears. I need those. If I do, will you scream? Yeah. Will I hear your voice? Yeah. Please don't tear my ears off. It was a joke. No, it wasn't a very funny joke. I'm joking. No, you're not. Don't be scared. You're terrifying. <laughs> hey. hey. How do you think my eyes look? Oh, God. Do I actually have to talk to you? Sorry. Oh god, we actually do have to talk to him. Uh, they look broken, they look empty, they look lost. I mean, he sounds a bit broken. They look broken. They look... broken. Yeah. Ugh. Oh god, shut those peepers. Ew. I'm always Oops, sorry. Maybe you should stop. Making <laughs> a cracking sound as they go. A sound like... Ugh. This, in my desperation, I always attempt to piece them back together. I need to search for the missing fragments of myself. But they are never there. Maybe the wind takes them somewhere out of my reach. And that makes me sad. You know, it sounds like you should really talk to this therapist about this. Why don't I give you their number and address and you can go to their house and lurk over their bed. So sad. I put my hands where my eyes should be. And I borrow my fingers. No. And I take it out. Oh no. I take everything out. Oh, put it back. Oh god. Put it back. Put it back. Stop it. Every little piece that remains. Harder. Furiously. And wallowing in sorrow. I pray to whoever's listening to give back what's mine. Do not make me lose more than I've already lost. I don't want to waste my time. And search for more than I care for. Yet no one delivers. No one is listening. And so I weep invisible tears. Until I can feel the sorrow no more. Hey, have you ever strained yourself so hard to see what you want to see? That you end up blinding yourself to all? No, I, I just realized I needed glasses, and that's all I had to do, get have glasses. Have, have you tried glasses? I remain silent. These eyes... are these... my eyes? Uh... I don't know anymore. I feel like you kind of took them, so I'm gonna say no. I feel like you stole somebody's. Oh yeah, get rid of them. They're, they're no good anyway. So I didn't like them peering into my soul. How do you think my eyes... look? Oh. We have to choose Our another option. Finally mate. What will you find? Answer me. 
they look lost. They look lost. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if I like. I I hate this one more or the other one. That maybe so. These ones remind me of all the realistic eyes that like people like in high school draw. You know, you go into art class and they're like, draw something. You draw the realistic eye you find on Google or something. I'm never <laughs> sure of where I am. My days consist of wandering about aimlessly, searching for something. I worry that if I'm not paying attention, what I'm searching for will slip away. The thought terrifies me. It terrifies me so much. So I always keep my eyes peeled. Even if there's nothing to see, that way nothing will slip away. No matter where it goes, and no matter where it hides, no matter how terrifying the world might be, no matter the countless terrible things I witness by mistake in the process, no matter what, I will never blink. Yikes. I will forever be confused by the world around me. I will forever be lost. But what is that something that I'm searching for? It's been so long since my wandering began. I can no longer recall the feelings that drove me to it. What is it? Is it something I can hold? Is it a being of flesh and bones? Is it nearby? Is it you? I hope not. Hey, have you ever looked so fervently for something that you end up losing yourself in the process? Hmm. Have you? I'm not so sure. Uh, I remain silent. These eyes are these hmm. my eyes. So I get the feeling that this person is actually probably us, right? So, hmm, have I ever looked for something and kind of lost? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let me see what. Let's see what the last option is. Is that? I think it was empty, right? They look empty. Ugh. Yikes. That may be so. The eyes are the window to the soul. That's what someone told me long ago. They said that the soul was holy, bright, beautiful. Every person has one. But with that person said I was the exception. That something like me couldn't possibly own something so so bright, so beautiful. They looked inside of me, took a deep breath, and announced their conclusion with great fatigue. Their eyes, eyes that could see it all, couldn't find anything in there. I'm sure that if you were to cut me apart, not even blood would flow out, even if I felt it sometimes crawling through my veins. Maybe that's why I've never seen myself before, because I'm empty. Isn't that something to be grateful for? Because if I were to look and find nothing there, then surely I would feel disappointed. By not looking, I can ease myself of that pain. So maybe this is for the best. I can't remember who was the first to recite these words to me. Nor the second. Nor the third. Nor the several others who came after. The only thing I remember said they looked as empty as I did to them. Hey, have you ever felt so empty? So devoid of what makes everyone special that you've embraced the void as your own? Have you? Uh, can't these say I have. Are these? Huh. My eyes. Uh, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know about any of these options, but let's go with this one just because I don't know. I feel like he seemed the least disappointed about this. These pairs of eyes compared to the other ones. At least these ones he seemed like slightly happier having. A good answer. Yet there is only one way to know the truth. Open your eyes. I'd rather not. I'm not ready. No thank you. So you won't look at me, even though your eyes are so How pretty. do you know? <laughs> I can't see. Behind their fell of flesh, round like pearls, and shiny like jewels. So, so pretty. <sighs> Get away from my eyeballs. What are you gonna do? Lick them? It's fine. They're too close. We still have time. The night is 
still and silent. I I don't. Can it please be morning? It's like Five Nights at Freddy's. Could could the the, the alarm clock ding or whatever? Six a.m. Time to leave. People are good at closing their doors. Yeah, apparently not me. Do you know what a door is? It's that thing right behind you. Why don't you go check it out? Of course you know. You have one. Right there. At the verge of your little world. A door is a barrier to keep the bad out. The bad can be anything. A bad person. A bad smell. And sometimes... Me. I can't open doors. You see, we should have shut it. You wouldn't have been able to get in. <laughs> Well, in most, uh, commercial buildings, you- to leave a room, you push. It's like a fire hazard thing, you know? <laughs> Should I turn the knob left or right? Should I try to take it off its inches? Should I chip away at it, hoping it will fall apart? What happens when it opens? Do I close it behind me? Do I keep it open? But that might be rude to the person who had it closed. But then... All of his problems can be solved by installing, um, all, like, the automatic sliding doors, like you see in, like, grocery stores. I think, I think he would benefit from that. And what happens if the wind pushes it close? What then? So many options. So many things that could go wrong. Whenever I stand in front of a closed door, it paralyzes me. I stare at it for a long time and think of my excuses. Because that's all they are. What bothers me the most about closed doors is the idea they exist to keep me out. It fills me with the need to go in. So I search for a crevice or a window. Anything that might be open. Anything that might let me in. I'm not good with doors. But as long as there's a place where I can fit, then I can go in anywhere. Every night, I hop across the shadows of the streets. I'm careful. So as to not be caught by the light. In my eternal search, I pick a place where to rest. I slip in and spend the night wherever is comfortable without alerting anyone. Well, you see, now that's a lie because here you are. <laughs> Usually it's a cellar, an attic, anywhere with dust, with dirt. I feel at home there. But sometimes, just sometimes, an urge swells inside of me. So I search hard for a door that's open, for an entryway covered in darkness, and for someone to be at the other end, awake, as if expecting me. But you won't look at me, <laughs> even though you had your door open for visitors. No, I didn't. I'm, I'm just stupid. Why is that? I'm stupid. Are you afraid? Yes. Do I scare you? Yes. chatting for so long. It's been very one-sided. You haven't chased me out. I would like to, but I'm afraid to move. That means you welcome me. That is not the case. <laughs> so I'm certain that if I were to reach out my hand... Please, dear God, do not. No. <laughs> so, stop. You would reciprocate and grasp it. No, 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 no. I'm sure your hands are warm. Ah, too bad. They're cold. So Ice cold. Warm. Ice cold like my heart. Because people are always warm. Please hey, go away. How do my hands look? When my warmth finally meets yours, how will it feel? Answer me. Ah. <sighs> ah. Uh, uh. Maybe tired? Ugh. There's some long nails you got there. That may be so. You may want to clip them. These fingers of mine have touched so many things. Mm. <laughs> they are always stretching forwards, reaching out for something. The tip of my fingers dance over the surfaces that I travel, and their sensations reach the core of my brain, be it the softness of the first spring flowers or the roughness of a wall out of rubbish, caressing, grabbing, clawing. No matter the time of 
day, no matter if I'm awake or asleep, as if they had a mind of their own. Even now, they clutch onto the fabric of your bed sheets. Please make it stop. <laughs> you can stop. Don't they release lie your hands. Thousands of threads intertwined with each other. The rustle of fabric against fabric, of skin against skin, is irresistible. They want more. No, 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 no. No, no. Want to feel closer, to have it between them and around them, more and more and more. Sometimes, however, they can reach as far as they'd like. That's when I, hand to hand, I take over and stretch, stretch, stretch. Stop, stop stretching. And they grow. <laughs> no. Maybe just the length of a fingernail every time, but they grow just so they can reach out, clutch what they want, and then throw it aside, discarded, and forgotten. That's why they are tired, because they never stop seeking. Most likely, never will. Hey, have you ever stretched your fingers to grab a hold of something important? Only to learn that it's been long out of your grasp, have you? Uh. These hands are these. My hands. No. Is that so? How do my hands when my warmth find hands? Hmm. Uh... Maybe deceitful? They look deceitful. Oh. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, I don't know if you that can really call so. those hands anymore. These hands of mine tend to squirm into places I could never mm. imagine. You know what? Maybe this was a bad choice. I don't want your tentacles on me. Thank you. <laughs> Be it tiny holes in the walls, housing arachnids of all sizes, or the pockets of midnight walkers. Strolling the parks has sometimes served me as home. You know, please keep your tentacles far away from any and all holes. <laughs> These fingers squirm in and drag out what they find. So now I carry all sorts of trinkets with me. Keys, peeping gadgets, notes with love poems in them, the corpse of one or two insects, eventually eaten away by those who come take their place. I keep everything with me, regardless of their use. But sometimes, I feel bad, because maybe it was something important. The person I took them from could be distraught. Their happiness shattered. Their lives ended. So I consider and consider maybe dropping them somewhere in the park. But what if I need them? What if the keys can one day open the door I want? What if the poems help me befriend a new partner? What if the arachnids serve me? unlikely sustenance <laughs> I mean go ahead and eat the spiders but I think the, everything else I don't I really don't think you'll have a use for there are too many ifs but I'm also too afraid to find out the truth so I let them stay with me slowly becoming a part of me helping me grow I've grown so much I had to lower my head when entering your room these fingers won't stop mm, no Squirming and coiling around everything they feel. No, thank you. And I can only hope they merely take what they need. I would be saddened if my body grew too much because I wouldn't get to enter rooms like yours anymore. You know what? Keep growing. Hey, have you ever attempted to help yourself grow by mercilessly taking away from someone else? Have you? I don't think so. Are these? No. Let's try the last hands. They look incomplete. They look incomplete. Hmm. Uh, I don't know which my least favorite is. So. <laughs> and probably the tentacles. Those are kind of weird. <laughs> I have lost more than I can imagine. I have left people behind. People who are my chat companions. Just like you are now. Feel free to leave me behind whenever. So it's no Mm. Or flesh. Mm. Or bones. No. Or anything that makes me, me, as farewell 
gifts, you could say. It sounds like an excuse, and that's because it is because I am careless and overly curious. I can't help but wonder how everything feels to the touch, like the crust of a tree or the surface of a frozen lake. But sometimes I find something else, like a building engulfed in a raging fire. I think of the screams in the distance, or the suffering and death and charred skin, and wonder, how does that feel? So I put my hands to the fire. It hurts, but I tolerate it, and keep them there for long enough that the uncomfortable feeling dissipates, and the smell of charred skin starts protruding from my own. And when I take them out, the feeling persists, that horrible, intoxicating feeling. I seek such extreme sensations. The edge of a knife sometimes provides it. Other times, the fangs of a beast. Most times, however, it's by mere accident. I would place my fingers over a benign surface, only to discover it's covered in spikes, and I would leave my hands there as I traverse along it, leaving parts of my body as a farewell gift. In that sense, it's not so different from what I was saying before. The fire and the blades are friends. They have granted me times of great fun. So, it's only polite to leave something of yours as a sign of thanks. But there's one thing I've always loathed from these encounters. They're always painful. I'd rather they weren't. Hey, have you ever placed yourself in arm's way? Only to feel the satisfaction you realize is not yours, have you? No, and I don't even quite understand these what that means. Are these sure, you can keep them. A good answer. <laughs> Yet, there is only one way to know the truth. Open. No, thank you. Eyes. I will not. I don't want to. So you won't look at me, even though my hands could be the same as yours. I really hope they aren't. Think about it. Maybe you and I are similar. skin oh is that your heart i'm surprised you, you have one it? my skin is pulsating i don't think that's how skin works buddy it has been long since this happened it's a sign of my innermost emotions flowing out i wander the world wanting to be seen i'll be satisfied as long as someone tells me how i look but it's not like anyone will do. If it did, then it would be oh so easy. Since I could show myself to everyone at once, every living person in this land, and ask them all the same question, someone will answer. There's no doubt about it, but it might not be the answer I wish for. Since I don't want to be judged, I don't want to be perceived as something I'm not. It scares me. That is why, when someone is on the verge of looking at me, I shy away. I hide, fading into the dark. But you might be different. If it's you, it might be possible to stand still, if only for a second. That way you can help me, and we can both be fulfilled. Just thinking about it, it makes me feel... Feel... Something. I cannot describe it. I am not good. With words, there was a person in my past who taught me to speak like a person. They were not good at it either. And thinking back on it, they certainly didn't enjoy it. To teach a wordless being how to talk must be a challenge. Yet, they did, simply because they could. It is weird to remember, because it makes me think of why I want to be seen, and I am not. Sure, I don't care much for my appearance. I mean, you kinda do. You've been asking me this entire time what you look like, and to open my eyes and look at you, so I think you really, at the end of the day, you kinda care. I don't want to be judged. See? Even you know. So why is it? Why do I want someone to recognize me so much? Maybe it's only because
as I can because everyone gets to be recognized but me but I will soon once you open your eyes I'd rather not there it is again just thinking about the moment you unveil your sight onto me and you finally take those bed sheets off your body and you inspect every crevice of mine Ew, well, no thank you I will not be looking in your crevices Haven't I been talking to you, kinda? Haven't I already opened my lips? To let me hear what I am, and to maybe even give me a name. Frederick. You're Frederick now. It makes me feel, but I don't know what. Surely it would be evident if you were to look at my face. Hey, what does my expression look like when that veil of uncertainty finally disappears? What will we convey to each other? Answer me. Hmm. Cheerful smile. I don't know if I want to see your smile. Surprise grimace. It's an emotionless stare. Hmm. Maybe surprised? A surprised grimace. <sighs> hmm. No, that's... That's... I don't think that's what I had in mind. That may be so. kind of committed at this point to just pretending I'm kind of asleep. You were surprised and averted your eyes, but instead, you stayed, listening, acknowledging you are the first to do this for me. You are new and unexpected, yet, how odd is this really? Surprise? No. You say it is, so it must be true. But what I'm feeling right now, what I'm experiencing, it's not the same as those who've seen me, as if their surprise was something different from mine. Hey, have you ever acted surprised? Not because you are, but because you believe that's how you must feel. Have you? Actually, that one, probably. <laughs> uh. This expression. Is this? Hmm. My expression. I mean, uh, my family's really bad at surprise party so i i did have to act surprised a couple of times <laughs> um you know what yeah this is you <laughs> i see thank you you have truly helped me tonight these are my eyes these are my hands and this is my expression i consider these my most treasured features you have helped me picture them all. No one has done this for me. I feel a connection with you, one born out of honest gratitude. But there is one step left. You need to make sure of the truth. It is the only way to finally understand each other. So please, I beg of you, open your eyes. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Here we go. Maybe we'll be lucky and he'll disappear or whatever. I open my eyes. Huh. And he's gone. There's nothing there. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm, was he truly real? Hmm. So that was don't open your eyes. I mean, obviously there's a couple of different ways to like change his appearance and stuff, but I do wonder, I don't know. I wonder what happens if you don't open your eyes. Will he just be eternally sad? I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel bad for him. He's kind of really weird, but <laughs> I, I guess everyone wants to be, I don't know, perceived. <laughs> but yeah, I get the feeling. I, I feel like they, that guy was probably us, right? I mean, because they're asking all those questions and it's like, did you ever feel that way? It's like, so I like kind of feel like you're just kind of building the night terror version of yourself or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I do wonder, uh, what the heck is wrong with the person that makes these games? They have so many strange, strange games. Like, Cause I remember Radio Talk being like kind of a heavy and also pretty weird game. <laughs> it's just like, what is going on inside their head? But that's all for this one. So let me know what you think of the game down in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. This is Casper Kuma. Over and out.